Hello, right, as you can see, I'm rebuilding the cell. Um, I've come outside to do it because it's a lovely day. Um, right, so I've changed it now to five neutral plates. As you can see, I'm just putting in the cable ties. Right, these cable ties I've cut down and I'm going to try and leave them in situ when I glue it so that it always keeps the right distance you know the right um, spacings between the plates hopefully that will work we'll see you later right so I've added all these uh, cable ties now see the space in there really good I spent a while doing it. So now I've got to glue, glue some acrylic on the top. Oh, by the way, I've pushed down these just slightly in the middle so that the glue can take a hold somewhat. But uh, yeah, they're going to they're going to stay in now. Those cable tires. Right, we'll see how it glues. Right, um, so here we have it. it. Took me a few hours to get to this point. Just finished gluing. Uh, yeah, as you can see, I cut all the things using my amazing Dremel type saw. I used every little last drop of uh, my first tube of marine goop and some of my second I've got one left after that and yeah so now I've got to just keep this from sticking to anything while it dries which will probably take a couple of days hello right remember this I bought it a while ago I, I didn't use it yet it's uh, it's um, for washing machine hoses let me show you my washing machine hose where's it gone here we go right so here's the hose it's a long hose very thick and uh, it should be quite sturdy well I took one of these and I chopped this end bit off So now I've got this and what I plan on doing is sticking this inside there now this screw on bit I've taken from this side at the bottom and in the screw on bit is where I'm going to have the plastic sheet so this will be the blowout valve and this will be where the uh, the hose connects to um, and this will all be coming out the top of this lid. You see I've drilled two holes in it already. So I need to f somehow fit this inside of there. And we should be okay. Right, I wanted to show you this. Um, I bought it yesterday on eBay and it was delivered today. So I was quite pleased with the delivery speed. Um, and I'm quite pleased with this as well. Um, this is a, a food temperature monitor thing. Um, you stick this, you would stick this inside the uh, piece of meat that you're cooking. And this plugs into this transmitter which goes to this display. Um, you can have it in degrees Celsius or Fahrenheit. It will go up to 199 of either 199 degrees Celsius or 199 degrees Fahrenheit because that's the only displays it's got the uh, the numbers on there um, so that's plenty big enough um, it was quite cheap this I don't know what steel this is grade but it's got to be 
quite good, you know, it's got to go inside food, so I'm, I'm assuming it's going to be something of a quite a high grade steel. Um, yeah, so this, this will sit in the cab with me in the van, so I can monitor the temperature. This will sit inside the soup with a wire coming outside. This will probably sit, this is bent at the end, so I'll probably sit this glue that in at the top have it coming down from the, uh, the lid um, yeah I'm quite pleased with this we'll see how it goes right you can see here the number in the bottom right hand corner is the number you need to pay attention to I've just stuck the probe over, it's underneath the seat on the moped and uh, it's in the sun so it should start heating up it's a black sea and it gets quite hot so you see that it's at 42 degrees celsius at the moment the probe is there's a switch on the back I can reach it so I can change between Fahrenheit so 110 Fahrenheit 44 degrees celsius So it just proves it works wirelessly, it should be quite good. I've got this these, this gasket material which Smart Scarecrow kind of sent me as well, which I've chopped up little bits and used on both sides. You can see I've covered it in marine goop on the bottom just so there's no uh, gaps for gas to escape. Just waiting for that to dry, um, but hopefully that should keep the heat away from the the uh, the lid itself. So hopefully it will stop it from melting the top. You can see now I've got the uh, temperature probe, thermometer probe in there, and I've added this tube as well. It's just a tube from the outside, open to you know regular air. It goes right down to below the cell brick. This is going to be for um, vacuum problems. I've noticed on other people's cells, once the cell stops running, it caught, it forms a vacuum and sucks in from the bubbler. Sucks air in from, sucks water in from the bubbler, back into the cell and through the tubes and that. So uh, hopefully, once the vacuum forms, it should suck in from the outside air down below the water line, and then it should come through this this NT. Um, yeah. So I've just got to wait for the water, for the uh, glue to dry now. See, this is just the uh, the wire for the temperature probe. Also, started this bubbler. I'm just waiting for the glue to dry. This is what will be at the front of my van for people to see. Right, look at this then, eh? Shiny. Shiny. <laughs> oh yes. Well pleased. Right, I've still got a load of glue to dry, so I've just got to wait for that. See you next time.